Welcome to Crime Time News and Entertainment with a Buzz. First thing that is popping in the news. If you're a black man living in America, even if you're rich, even if you're famous, even though you're well be known, even if you have success, you should always remember that you are still a black man in a country that is very R-A-C-I-S-T. If you did not know, the NFL National Football League, they started regular games on Sunday. One of such teams is the Miami Dolphins. They were playing. Their star receiver, his name is Tyreek Hill. Apparently, he was late for the game. He was driving in his McLaren, which you know is a very expensive, very fast vehicle. Being late, he was blazing. Based on the Popo report, it is said that he was going 150 miles per hour in a 45 miles per hour zone. And that was when the Popo pulled him over. I am going to let you hear the interaction between that player, Tyreek Hill, and the Popo force in a Miami. Take a listen, take a look, and then I'll give the details. Hey, don't knock on my window like that, man. Don't knock on Why my, don't you have your seatbelt on? Don't knock on my window. Why don't you have your seatbelt on? Don't knock on my window like that, no. Like what? Don't knock on my window like that. Why no. you have it up? Don't knock on my window like that. Why you have it up? I have to knock to let you know I'm here. Don't knock that way you can lower it and talk Just to you. Just get my ticket, bro, so I can go. I'm finna be late, gang. Do what you gotta do. What? What? Keep it down. Hey! Keep your window down. What? What? Honey. Hey, keep your window down. Don't tell me what keep your window down, I'm gonna get you out of the car. As a matter of fact, get out of the car. Get out of the car. Get, get out of the car. Get out of the car right now. We're not playing this game. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. What part of the building doing this now? Hey, Drew. Hey, Drew, I'm getting arrested, dude. I'm getting arrested. I'm getting arrested, Drew. I'm getting up. When we tell you to do something, you do it. You understand? Up. You understand? Not what you want, but what we tell you. Hold on, Hold on, bro. I just had surgery on my knee. I just had surgery on my knee, bro. I just had surgery on my knee, bro. I just had surgery, really? surgery in your ears when we told you to put your window bro. Chill. Now, people, like I said, the first initial report that they claim he was going. 150 in a 45 miles per hour zone so therefore that would be considered as dangerous driving he was going excessive so maybe that would have been reasons for arrest however official reports is that he was actually going 60 miles per hour in a 45 miles per hour zone so therefore 15 miles would make it a ticketable offense if you notice, if you look at the video, you could see that the Popo had his documentation. The Popo had his driver's license. The Popo had everything that he needed. So therefore, no more argument should have been in a dot. As a matter of fact, he could have easily just run the plate and everything would come back. However, the fact that this man was Spanish sounds like either Cuban. Some sorts of Hispanic heritage might come from. It tells you what the problem was. The problem was R-A-C-I-ism. The problem was bad mind. The problem was covetousness. The problem was that you pulled over a man that you know is super rich, super fast, super famous. In the NFL, the best. In the NFL, best receiver. Bar none. Well, it's questionable. Some people don't call other people name, but top three, definitely. This man just signed five years, $150 million. His salary is $30 million per year. He makes in excess of about $2 million US dollars per game. In excess, I said. Everybody knows him. Everybody, including those officers, Based on the fact that his license plate told you exactly who he is, they call him cheater, as in speed, as in fast. Now, here's the thing about 
that place called America that everybody loves to be and everybody wants to go there because it is a land of opportunity. When we talk about R-A-C-I-S-T, it does not get any sorts of worse. And I am not speaking about the trumpets. What are even worse are the people that come from other countries, specifically in this instance, some sorts of Hispanic, more than likely Cuban. So I say this to say that people come from nowhere, run from them country because of desperation, come on America, and abuse somebody that is actually born there. Somebody that is famous there. Somebody that should have just been given a ticket for going 15 miles per hour over the speed limit of 45 miles per hour. So therefore, give the man a ticket and make him go about in business. There is no sorts of problem. You did not require any sorts of search for any sorts of criminal activity. You know so the man need not be in a, any sorts of criminal activity because even if he was hustling pedico, he would not make the money that he is making legitimately. So therefore, he has absolutely no sorts of reason. Even if I told him not have no criminal record, him can carry a A to the K, a M to the 6, and him can carry anything. There was no sorts of reason other than bad mind, grudgefulness, and R-A-C-I-S-M. So therefore, you are putting up this, showing your true colors because of hate. And what was even worse is that his squaddies were also there and they were being wrong and strong. We see the same thing in our Jamaica and now we see the same thing in America. It is just hate. People are just who they are. Whenever they get in any sorts of situation, their natural instincts is going to get kicked in and that is exactly what happened. And if you are a very observant person, isn't it ironic that whenever you are passing through the immigration customs in America, the people them around left them country the most, being the Spanish, the Mexican, whoever, is the people that gives you the biggest hassle. So the people whose family and country got the most hassle as it pertains to immigration becomes immigration officers and give the most problem when it comes to immigrants. It makes absolutely no sorts of sense. Talk about reverse A-B-U-S-E. What is good, if you look at the screen, this is a picture of the man after he scored some sorts of touchdown. You saw one of his teammates holding him as if he is in a some sorts of arrest position. So like the saying goes, he who laughs, laughs, laughs best. Because it is said that one of those officers is on administrative leave, desk job. He will no longer be on the streets and people. They could have hurt this man who is probably the best receiver in a all of football right now. Very expensive person. All of this for just a minor traffic infraction. It should not have escalated to that point. But people, like you see, this is what happens when hate kicks in. Whenever you give power to the wrong people. Point blank and period. So the next thing that is popping in the news, it is called Say It Isn't So WTF. I am speaking about a 46-year-old man. His name is Denver Bernard. He used to be in Jamaica, not doing as well as when he migrated, immigrated to the United States, Bronx, New York, the Big Apple to be specific. It is said that less than a, a day or so ago, he was exiting his house. As soon as he stepped down, some people step out of some sorts of dark vehicle, blaze up a barrage of corn upon him. After the smoke settled, he was hit at least three times. Ring, 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 poor, poor, dead. When the poor, poor came, he was seen laying in a pool of his own B L O O D. Based on what his landlady said, he's a very respectable man, pays his rent on time. Came to America to work and send back money to his family in a Jamaica. Very responsible person. I really don't know what is the specifics of this incident. What might have led to it. What is the motive. But this does not seem like a case of mistaken identity. As to what the real circumstance is. Is there some sort of family member that is involved. 
some sorts of family member that crossed somebody and he was not aware because obviously he was said to be going to work when he was caught sleeping. Is this somebody that he did wrong in a Jamaica? Did people know, say, you know, know, so the little man, the Mr. Bernard, I come from Jamaica, I come from America. So therefore, we are going to get him up here. Don't know if a quark or syndrome. Don't know if he crossed somebody. Don't know if him take with somebody woman. Don't know if a somebody woman I try to take him out or him own woman I try to take him out. People, me not really know the specifics. All I know, it seems as if wherever Jamaicans go, the crosses follow them. And that seems to be the case as to exactly why and how. Uh, well, we know exactly how he did, i.e. the basement where the resident must say. But we just uh, say, we don't know where make what is the motive. But whatever the circumstances, it is sad that he left from Jamaica, rough and tough place, come to the land of opportunity for better, and it seems as if things just take a turn for the worse, as bad as it can get. D-E-A-T-H is the case that they gave him. As soon as I get some more pertinent information, I'll be sure to divulge ASAP, point blank and period. So the next thing that is popping in the news, they say that the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. In other words, how could it be in 2024, people still are washed in a gully? Such is the case of a 19-year-old youth, Rajan Melbourne, that was said to be crossing some sorts of gully in the era of Chesterfield. Him and a young lady, when both of them were swept away, luckily for the young lady, she was rescued by a group of onlookers who saw the whole incident unfolding. Unfortunately for Mr. Melbourne, he was not found. It is said that the fire brigade, along with other residents from the area, they launched some sorts of search and rescue. However, at about 6.40 last night, just before dark, dark, they called it off. They went to the Portmore Causeway area and they did not find the body. And the JDF and the rescue team said that, listen, after dark, in you know, them sorts of area, they, all sorts of crocodile, we can't see anything, even when we use our high-profile drones. So therefore, at the end of the day, two people stepping at some sorts of gully in our water and get washed away. Luckily for one, a young lady, she was saved. However, Mr. Melbourne was unfortunate. People, it makes no sorts of sense. Like the members of the JD have said, this could have easily been prevented. You see the water, a rush. The force that is in that water, you cannot maintain any sorts of balance. And once it sweeps you away, more than likely you are going to end up in the gully. You are going to end up for some sorts of meal, for some sorts of crocodile or fishes. Point blank and period. So the next thing that is popping in the news, it is called, you know, say, the government of Jamaica. You know, say, the management of Jamaica. You know, say, the management of our airports, whether it's Norman Manley or Sangsters International Airport. Speaking about Sangsters International Airport specifically in this video. So based on what the report said, an elderly man that was at the airport, he had some sorts of medical condi condition, heart attack or something like that. And they tried to call, summon the persons who are responsible for any sorts of emergency happenings. However, it took them quite a while. They had to call some place that is down the road, down the road meaning maybe about 30, 45 minutes from the actual airports. Based on the information that I am getting by the time that emergency team, including ambulance, including paramedics got there, the man had pretty much passed away. Everybody was dazed and confused, including the two medical personnel that are there, that are supposed to be there for the airport, should in case something like this pops off. They too were dazed and confused, could not help the situation. I guess they were not qualified in a CPR or any sorts of heart attack syndromes like that. So when this happened and the man lost him life, we saw there were videos circulating past social media with family members and friends saying, how comes, 
How comes an international airport such as Sangsas International Airport don't have a team of paramedics, don't have a team or fleet of ambulance, should in case something like this pops off, and this is simply based on the fact that tourism is the ghost that lay and keeps laying the golden egg as it pertains to Jamaica, gross domestic products. Millions of persons pass through either Sangsters or even Norman Manley International Airport. So you would have thought that emergency facility would have been some sort of priority. So we see, say, Daryl Vaz has come out now and he must say, how comes like that JPS commercial? How comes there is no ambulance? How comes there is no paramedics? How comes there is just two little employees? Well, last uh, look like so them just come out of some sort of school, them go up on some sort of five-week program. So therefore, they are the medical help, just in case anybody get any sort of heart attack. I wonder if the many tourists that are coming here to enjoy the sea and the sun and the weed and everything else knows that their life is in jeopardy whenever they step off that plane. Because obviously, our government, the relevant authority, don't seem or deems, deems it to be any sort of priority. So therefore, they might play games with the people in life. And such is the case in this case in which an elderly man lost his life because there was no sort of medical help for him at the time. And he D-I-E-D like a dog in the street, actually in the airport. People, it makes no sorts of sense. The government of Jamaica, including JLP or PNP, all of them to part to the same sorts of sad song. I am not I am not judging either one, but me just as I said the two of them, whether it was that or not, it has always been like that and it should not be. People, hopefully, maybe about a hundred or a thousand more people have to go D E A D first because we know that our people they are not proactive, they are reactive. So therefore people have to either D E A D or get badly hurt before there's any sorts of changes implemented point blank and period so anyways people thanks once again for checking out my video if you appreciate videos like these please show your appreciation by liking commenting sharing and subscribing to my channel that is how youtube promotes videos like these to like-minded sensible persons like yourself and last but not least please subscribe to my next channel it is called jamaica dancehall source i'll be pinning the link to that channel in the description of this video bless up